At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we will start the press conference for Hampton University. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Joyner. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend Virginia. Uh, they, they're a tough ball club. Uh, and I think they got a seed that's well deserved. Um, again, I want to commend my guys. Uh, the toughest part about tonight is I feel it's unfair because I don't think the score shows exactly how hard they played and how hard they played throughout the year uh, to be able to do what they did. Uh, but again, uh, Virginia did what they what they what they publicized to do. Uh, they made it tough on us to make shots. Uh, again, I thought throughout some of the first half, I mean, the stats were pretty much even, except for us making shots. You know, especially we had about maybe a stretch about the 12-minute mark. Uh, but again, that's a credit to their defense and what they do. Uh, but you know, uh, um, I got I got a group of seniors and, and, and some kids in that locker room that, again, I want to commend them because uh, they, they've done a terrific job all year. That's it. Okay, at this time we're going to open up the floor for questions for the student athletes. Once again, only questions for the student athletes right now. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Go ahead. Can we get one to the middle there, Maddox? That's Clinton. Uh, you guys were able to give them a fight for the first half of the first half. What happened at the end when they, they finished on, I think, a 20-3 to three run? What was changing or what slipped away there? Um, I just feel like they knocked down shots and they just had more focus than us. Um, I mean, we came out with a strong focus for a little bit, but we just couldn't hold it through. And, I mean, of course, they came out with the win. Okay, let's just go across the aisle to Dave. Quentin, could you uh, speak to uh, their size advantage inside and, and how, how, how much that affected what you guys were hoping to do? Uh, I don't really think their size inside was really a big problem. I feel like them hitting threes was the clutchest thing for them. I mean, I know uh, Parentes had, I think, hit like three threes in a row, and then that just started to run. But I feel like when they were going inside, we were just going right back. But I feel like their, their bigness wasn't really a problem for us. I feel like it was a shooting from outside. I'm, I'm sorry, I meant mostly on, uh, on the defensive end, when you guys were on offense. Oh, um, I, I didn't really feel like it bothered me. I don't think it bothered Reds too much. It, it really came down to making shots. I mean, we weren't hitting shots. I don't know if it was really going to the rim that much. We just we couldn't knock anything down from beyond the arc or, or, or mid-range. Right back behind you, Maddox, with Mike. Uh, for Brian and Reg, you guys were, I think, a combined one for 12 from three-point range. Um, did you feel like you got good luck and they just weren't going down, or, or were those contested? What, what were you guys seeing? Brian, could you please answer that first? Uh, definitely feel like we got good looks. We just, you know, just missed. You know, it definitely was good shots, though. Reginald, could you comment? Yeah, like Brian said, you just hate to go out like that with getting some good looks and some open shots to not be able to knock them down in a game like this where we knew. You know, um, the outside shots was going to be a key factor for us to win. And being that uh, most of our outside shooting come from me and him to go one for 12, it hurts. Okay, get back to Dave. Roger, you said yesterday you thought that from what you had seen on TV that uh, and filmed that UVA had the best defense in the country. You still, I mean, after you've seen them firsthand, are they what you thought? Um, yeah, they, they were what I thought. They um, did a good job at you know, helping the helper. I mean, first we was able to beat them off the dribble, but you know, what was open was the driving kick and we missed shots and you know, the, the things that was open, we didn't capitalize on them. So, I mean, good thing for their defense when we didn't make shots. Are there other questions for the student athletes? Let's go back to Mike right behind you. For any of the players you can take this, but was it a distraction at all when uh, UVA's coach had that dehydration issue? Did you? notice it or were you kind of doing your own things? Quentin, could you answer that, please? No, nah, I didn't realize what was going on. I was just focused on the game. I think it was the same for my teammates, too. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, gentlemen, you're excused. Thank you very much. Now we'll open the floor up for questions for Coach Joyner. Maddox, can we go back to Mike in the middle there? Uh, Coach Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. The late run uh, in the first half where they really got that distance, 
did they do something different? Did something change, or, or why were they able to pull away at the end of that half? Oh, they knocked down a three-point ball. I think pretty much statistically we were even. You know, and at that point it may, I mean, they, uh, it may have been up a little bit, but not really much. Uh, like Quentin said, I know Parenthes may have hit two, maybe three straight. Uh, Nolte hit one, uh, and then I think they got an AM one on the inside, but uh, they knocked down the three-point ball. And again, that was one of the things that, that we kind of challenged the team, not to really shut it down, to make them take contested shots, because we knew that their size advantage on the inside was, was difficult, and we're not necessarily a double-down team. You know, we really haven't done that all year. Uh, so uh, uh, we wanted to challenge to try to make them knock down shots, and they did, uh, again. Uh, uh, but I thought that's what caused the separation. They shot the three-point ball well. Uh, they may, I think they were one for something at that point. They may have hit three or four straight, and that provided them some, some separation. So I thought that was the difference. Can we go over here to Jerry? Coach, Jerry Rackliff, Charlottesville Daily Progress. What's the difference in uh, studying these guys on film and then having to play against it? It's, it's, does it take a lot of adjustments or? It, it, it does, but I mean, I don't think that film do, do them justice. And when I say that, b because of the caliber of competition that they have to play against every night, uh, what's the young man's name? Uh, Isaiah Wilkins. Uh, I can name a couple of other guys that when you're looking at on film because they're playing against a Carolina or a Duke or where those guys are the ones you're saying, okay, if you're going, if, if we're going to lose, we're going to make them beat us or we're going to make them do this. And, and I think sometimes you forget that those are talented kids. They're ACC caliber kids for a reason, <laughs> you know, and they went out there and we, they actually got the ball in some areas that we said, let's live with and see if they can hit that. And they hit it, <laughs> you know, and they, you know, again, as, as gifted as they are defensively, when, when you don't have to see that caliber, when you have to see them every night, uh, you, you kind of forget how well some of them kids can play offensively when given the opportunity. Let's go to Dave in the middle. Buck, to, to follow that up a little bit, and, and you face this anytime you go to the tournament, but after going against the MEAC and then not only an ACC team, but maybe the best team in the country or one of them, is it, is it as a really tough thing to for, to, for the kids to immediately adjust to that kind of difference? Well, I, I don't know. It's not an immediate adjustment. I think we were ready immediately. We were ready for the first 10, 12 minutes of that ball game. You know, like I told my sisters at halftime, the tough part is that they wear on you. You know, that type of talent wears on you. You know, we, now you're talking about some nice facing a 6'3 guard that we're just as strong or stronger than to a 6'5, six, 6'6 six, six guard, you know, who could do multiple things, post up this. You know, so again, I think immediately we were fine. It's, it's, over the course of 20, it's over the course of 20 to 40 minutes that you have to deal with, with that caliber of talent and size uh, 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 night in, night out. Well, for one night, becomes tough on you. And I think, I think we hit a point where we just got tired. You know, and, and it wasn't because our kids are not in shape or they're not battle-tested. I mean, he, they, they actually went to their bench and got bigger. I mean, we don't, we don't see that. You know, we go to our bench, and that's what some of our conference say about us. When you go from Adams and, and, and uh, Quentin Chivas to Presley and Charles Wilson Fisher, we get bigger. They got ten times bigger. I mean, it, and it's tough to deal with over time. Okay, we're going to go over here, and then we'll come back. You mentioned hanging in there for, for 10 minutes. You were in there for about 10 minutes with, with Kentucky in this game last year. How did the two games kind of compare? And obviously that's a Kentucky team that went on to the Final Four. You know, how do you see this Virginia team kind of moving forward? Uh, I think they're very talented. I mean, I, the one thing that I can say about them and I, I could be so complimentary of them about is that they pay attention to detail. I mean, they don't miss an assignment. And you can tell it's something that they've worked on, talked about. I mean, we went, in the, we went inside for a play or two early and actually got a bucket. They begin to double. Uh, Reggie Johnson, I think he's right. He beat a couple of them off the dribble a few times. They start hedging real hard. You know, they, don't, they pay attention to detail. And I think that that's, that's one thing for, it, for any championship caliber team when you get here. You know, you need to be able to do that. Now, again, uh, they're going to face some different opponents, you know, from now on who, who at, have, have similar size and similar talent than they do one through ten. You know, but, again, they pay attention to detail, and I think they got a strong, a, 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 a strong team that can make it pretty far in this tournament. I would not be shocked if I was at the Final Four in Houston and they were playing. Let's go back to the middle of the mic. 
Coach, what was your reaction to Tony Bennett with the, the collapse and the dehydration? Did you take note of that, and what, kind of what did you think? At first, I really didn't know what went on. I didn't even see it. I just know when the guys started coming towards the bench, I was first hoping that nothing crazy had happened on the court, meaning an elbow or something that they had to go. And then when I saw them um, tending to him and I asked one of the referees and he told me what happened, I mean, then, then it went to straight concern. You know, then I became concerned for him and make sure that he was all right. You know, and I, and I think right before the half and after the game, I asked him, you know, about him. But, it, you know, then it, it went from not knowing what happened to concern and, and happy to see that he was able to stay out there and, uh, and, and continue to coach that game. Okay, we're going to go way back to David, and then we'll get Dave. Hey, Buck, David Teal from the Daily Press. You mentioned yesterday that Q has been even better than you could have hoped for over the last couple of years, his performance today in that vein as well. I mean, he looked like he absolutely belonged out there. Well, I mean, again, Q's a Tennessee transfer, so he, he's seen that type of talent before. But one thing I, I, I can tell you is that uh, night in, night out, he, he's a warrior. You know, and, and to be honest with you, the bigger the game, the better he plays. I mean, he, he, he's not, Quentin is not a three-point shooter by, by statistics, but he understood that part of our game plan was for us to stretch them out. He had to make one or two, and early on he did that. You know, I think uh, uh, he, he fought as hard as he could for 40 minutes, but he's a big-time ball player, and I hope that he's able to, he's able to continue his basketball career on uh, from here because I think he deserves it. Let's go back to Dave in the middle. Buck, can you just sort of uh, sum up Q and just their whole senior class and what they were able to accomplish with the two titles? And Well, I mean, I, I think it, I don't know that they'll truly understand what they did for this athletic program until it's all said and done. For the first couple of nights, they probably won't because you just hurt. Of course, when you're a 16 seed, you want to be the first to be the one. And I'm not one of those guys who shy from that. We talked about it. We believed it, I think. We, we tried to live it. You know, we wanted to do it, even though we fell short of that goal. I know they're going to be heard about that. Uh, but this senior class, again, they, they didn't do anything that hasn't been done at this university before. But I think what they did, they made you remember it all. You know, you do see the picture when Murrayfield gets picked up and this and that. But this generation of kids don't know why and, and where. They just know. I, I saw the car commercial where the guy get picked up. You know, uh, but from what they've been able to do and this being a social media atmosphere, they helped put Hampton back on the map and athletically, academically, socially, and, and, and I'm so proud of them for that. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. We are expecting Virginia to begin momentarily.
We are now ready to begin the University of Virginia portion of the press conference. Coach Bennett is just going to pass on his opening statement, and we're going to move straight to questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get you a microphone. Let's start with Mike right there, and then we'll go back. Uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Anthony, it looked like there's a picture of you almost praying over Coach Bennett when he was uh, dealing with his dehydration. What were you doing, and, and what were you thinking when you kind of didn't know exactly what was up with him? Uh, I didn't know what was going on, and I was praying just to make sure that he was okay. And just as, yeah, it worked. You know, I, I, I healed him. <laughs> okay, we're going to go in the back over here. Norm Wood from the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Tony, can you talk about what happened there? We need to do players to, first. We need to okay. Do student athletes. All right. First. Um, guys, you guys were able to go on a. 20-3 to three run to, to end the first half and kind of put this game out of reach. What were they doing early on to kind of make life difficult for you? And, and uh, how much more comfortable were you, obviously, after the, the run to kind of build a cushion? Malcolm, could you maybe answer that and then London? Um, I, you know, I think it was a matter of both of the teams getting settled down, getting adjusted. You know, I think there are a lot of nerves coming into this game, it being the first um, game of the tournament. So, um, you know, we just had to get adjusted. Uh, on both ends and, uh, you know, start establishing ourselves inside. And I think AG was able to finish a couple for us early and that got us going, got us to a good start. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it started with our defense. Uh, definitely we uh, started to buckle down defensively, started playing with more energy. Um, and then AG started uh, making some layups and then it opened it up for some threes and some, uh, some runouts. But it all started with our defense. Let's go up front to Doug here. Doug Dowdy from the Run-Up Times. London, talk about, you just mentioned the three-pointers. What were they doing that maybe opened things up there late in the first half? Um, I think it just started with, like I said before, getting into the paint, um, having our bigs uh, be uh, aggressive down low, um, and just finishing down low. And then it opened it up for us around the three-point line. We, start, we wanted to start going inside first and then playing inside out. So uh, I think that's, that's what we did. Other questions for the student athletes? Can we just go right over there to the right? Uh, Lunda, just uh, you kind of kicked things off there, uh, got on a hot streak, hitting the threes, and that kind of opened things up for you guys. Uh, can you kind of tell us uh, what that feels like for you when you get in a groove like that? Um, just being aggressive. I, I, Malcolm uh, fed me the ball at the right times. Uh, when people like AG and Malcolm are going, it opens it up for other people. and. Just being able to hit the open shots, it feels good. And uh, I just want to keep, keep it rolling uh, going forward. Okay, we're going back on the right, and then we'll come get you. Anthony, you're from North Carolina. Is it any special, any extra special to have such a big game um, on a court in your home state? Um, anytime my family can be here uh, and help me, kind of motivate me to, to play the best I can play, you know, I think that that really, you know, gets me going. And uh, I guess it is kind of special being here in North Carolina only because I am born and raised here. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed to, to be in the position that I'm in. Let's go right here in the front. Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Malcolm, it's not often that you spend the final 10 minutes plus on the bench of a one-sided game. With another game two days from now, how much could that help you? Um, I think it can help <clears throat> the team as a whole a lot. Uh, you know, I think rest is the most important thing coming into the tournament. And then, you know, playing these games almost back to back. So um, I think it's going to help us tremendously to be able to get up by a lot, win by a lot, and be able to rest, uh, rest our guys. Let's go back to Mike first, and then we'll get Doug, and then we'll get you. Uh, for Anthony in London, were you able to watch any of the early game? What do you know about your next opponent? And what is the challenge of the tournament setting where you have the quick turnaround? London, could you go first, please? Uh, I watched a little bit of the first half. Um, offensively, they're, they're pretty dangerous, being able to shoot the ball. Have some uh, not good bigs inside, but also they can shoot the ball as well. So uh, it'll uh, pose a, a, a different uh, team than we did play today. So um, and we're, we're just trying to get ready as best as we can. Um, we'll just watch some films tomorrow, uh, practice as, as, much, as best as we can, but also rest our bodies. It's really about us when it comes down to the tournament. Anthony, could you comment on that? Uh, yeah, they. I watched a little bit of the game as well, and uh, I remember the commentators saying that um, they do get out in transition, but they also don't turn the ball over as much as a lot of teams do get out in transition. Um, but you know, we gotta, we just gotta be back and packed and and ready from the start. You know, um, 
the biggest thing about tournament time is the recovery in between games, and uh, you really have to treat your body well, eat right um, on that, with, with that one day off. Get Doug up front again. Uh, yeah, Doug Dowdy. Uh, Malcolm, could you talk? You've talked in the past about the guys coming off the bench. Could you talk about the? I think it's 33 points you got off the bench tonight. Um, I think it's huge, especially for our first game. I think we need the momentum. We need the. We need our guys coming off the bench to play with confidence going forward. Um, and you know, I think that most of the time, teams that have the best bench production, um, whether that's getting stops or producing on the offensive end, I think they end up winning a lot more games than the teams that don't. Okay, now we're back in the middle. A lot of teams say defense sparks their offense, but it seemed like that was really true for you guys this today. When you they went on, a, I think it was five minutes where they didn't score, and then you guys really started pouring it on. Does that really, when you guys are forcing turnovers, getting stops, spark your offense? Anthony, could you please take that? Uh, yeah, I really think we feed off of our defense. Um, you know, anytime we can get a stop, you know, we we really get up for that, and um, that's something we pride ourselves on. And and when, we're, when our defense is executing the way we should, you know, it, it really makes it a lot easier for our offense. Okay, we're going to go way in the back here to David. David Teal from the Daily Press. Anthony, as the uh, true point guard of this team, are you particularly proud of your career high four assists tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you know. I'm glad you pointed out that I am the true point guard of this, of this team. Um, a lot of people don't notice that, but I am very proud of that. I didn't even know I had four assists, but you know that's credit to my teammates knocking down shots when I give them the ball. <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, gentlemen, you're excused. Congratulations and thank you very much. Now we'll go ahead and open the floor up for Coach Bennett. Uh, Maz, can you go ahead and give Mike, Mike the mic? Uh, Coach, can you take us through what happened there at the end of the half? What did they tell you? And yeah, scary moment for you? No, I, I think I just been a little under the weather, weather the last couple of days, and I think I was a bit dehydrated. And then when you're squatting down and you get up quick, I just um, grayed out or blacked out a little bit. I was saying something to London, and. Uh, had more Powerade than I've ever had in my life right now. So I'm, I'm hopefully hydrated well. And um, it was, um, yeah, I, I don't, I've got, that's happened before where you just get up quick and been a little dizzy, but uh, I don't know, just happened kind of quick and just was a little off. Swartz maybe being a little under the weather is what played into that. So thank you for asking. Were you aware of Anthony praying over you and being right there? Uh, I, I, I didn't, no, um, I, I didn't, no. That's very kind of him. Other questions for Coach? Can we go up front here? Eric? Lute Williams from the Black College Sports page. Coach, were you surprised that they didn't try to maybe put some pressure on you, maybe press you in the second half when they got down? Well, um, you know, they're, um, they had a heck of a year, Hampton did, to, to win your regular season and win your conference tournament. And Coach has done a good job. And they're really, a, you asked the question someone did about the three-point shots. They really do a good job of jamming the lane and choking. And that's how we got some threes. Um, and, you know, when you start pressuring, it opens up some things. They tried some zone. They tried different things. But we had a nice balance going inside and outside. And um, that's a tough spot to be in, you know. And, that's how they've been successful. They've, you have to do what you do, and you can't just become someone you're not. And I think when we separated a little bit, it, it was tough for them. But um, they, early on, you know, they were jamming the lane. We got some inside shots, and we weren't hitting. Um, I could see that watching film that they had that ability. But they had a heck of a year. They really did. And, you know, the score got a little bit away from them. But um, to, to do both what they did, um, certainly had respect for them. And those two veteran teams playing is what it was. Let's go right behind you, Maddox, first, then we'll go here, and then we'll get you, Kip. Coach, the three-point shot was big for you guys, obviously, today. Was that sparked by some of the defensive stops or because it was when they were packing in the lane so tight? Or how, how did that actually I think both. Um, you know, we missed some early, but we had to go inside. And again, they jam. They really try to keep the ball out of the lane and penetrate. So you, if you could touch the paint or at least draw and kick, you were going to get some rhythm shots. And, um, you know, you got to make some of those. You just have to. Um, but defensively, we talked about that, just uh, try to make them earn everything. They hit a couple tough shots. Uh, Chivas hit a couple threes. And, you know, statistically, he's about 22% in conference, I think 29 overall. 
So he hit some of those, and you know that Johnson can get going. So I thought that, um, I thought that um, once we got after about eight minutes or whatever that stretch, we kind of tightened it up defensively and contested a little more. And that really, we knew we could get stops. That helped us. We'll go over here on the edge. Uh, yeah, Coach Joyner had mentioned that um, your size gave them some issues. He said, you know, you kept bringing size off the bench. With their four guard lineup, was was that something that you hoped to, you know, give them that problem? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know, Mike came in and, and Anthony, and that, I used them together at times. Um, and our guards are big, so uh, that, that was important. They, um, you know, Chivas is an interesting. He's, he's a little bit like Blossom game for Clemson, who he he can really he's really quick off the bounce. Um, so he he were, we were concerned about that matchup, and he exploited it a little bit. Um, then Isaiah did a good job, but we had to take advantage of our, I mean, I don't think it shows too much on the glass, but our size was an advantage, so we tried to go inside, and Anthony did a good job, and Mike and, and the other guys once they got some touches. Okay. Max, if you can turn back to Kip there, and then we'll come here and there. Yeah, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Tony, uh, the last two years, you know, relatively close calls and, and sort of a struggle in the first round games. How much better do you feel the way your team performed today? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's you just know going into this. I mean, it was tight early, and then we separate it. Um, those first games, Malcolm said, there's a guy who's a fifth year senior who's got probably more experience than most guys, and it's just how it is. Uh, it's all at zero once that ball is tipped, and you know we talked about the difference between saying and doing, um, the seedings, the 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 expectations. You, you just got to put those away and play and however long it takes. So to be able to have a little separation like that um, and have some more comfort certainly was, was different than last year's because two years ago here we were in, we were fortunate to win against a, a really good Coastal Carolina team. Played Belmont last year, so much of it is matchups. It really is. And uh, we had the size difference and you know some experience. And uh, I'll take this feeling over the, the other two that you mentioned for sure. Okay, we can go back down to the edge here and then we'll get Aaron. Ava Wallace from the Washington Post. Um, in that same vein, what can a game with a score like this kind of do to your guys' focus? We've seen this team do well and then come out the next game a little bit slow. Um, yeah. Do you think they've they know better by now, pretty much? Yeah, you don't you don't have an opportunity. I mean, it's you're done now, so you got to be ready. I, Butler's a team that um, they don't beat themselves, from what I know and respect that program, what they've done in the past, how they play now, and I'll watch them more, but. In, you're at the stage now where it's just it's it's who's playing best, and I think our guys understand that, and they'll present some challenges that we'll have to we'll have to be on point with. But um, it's um, I think the guys understand what's at stake, and again, I, they're capable. You know, we always say you're able, but will you? And that's what you got to answer once once we get started. Let's get Aaron right here. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Tony, you're not known for sideline histrionics or anything, but was it weird to be? glued to that uh, that stool in the second half and not really – did you have to, like, maybe tell yourself not to jump up yeah, quickly? They, a couple they just, yeah, they just told me to sit there and drink the Powerade so, and dehydrate. So, yeah, and, the, and thankfully the game wasn't close where, you know, um, in, the, in the second half. So, yeah, usually you like to be kind of active and involved, but I guess it shows you that coaching's overrated because I don't think they knew I was over there. You could sit on your hands and they wouldn't notice her if you're active. That's just for coaches to feel good, I think, so – we're going to go way back in the back corner. Coach, Eric Brady from USA Today. Did the doctors mention to you the term vasovagal response? That's a common form of feigning when you stand up yeah, too fast. Yeah, I think they, yeah, they said something like that. You probably had a, a vagal reaction. And, you know, being a little under the weather, um, I'm sure it was. I'm sure that's all it was. Just so I don't think it's anything too serious. More, more embarrassing than anything, I'll be honest. But it is what it is, and I'm sure I'll get – I'll get teased a lot about it, but we'll, we'll move on. I'm going to go to the edge here, and then if you can get into Norm. Coach, what do you get more joy from, shooting the ball the way you guys did today or having five-minute stretches where they're not scoring? Uh, both, uh, but we, we have to start it with good defense. In this tournament, you got to be airtight or as, as best as you can defensively to make people earn. Um, then you get those stretches, but I think it has to come with that first. Um, but, you know, you have to play both ends to, to advance in this thing. And um, it was nice to see both for sure, but it starts with the defense. Eric, can you get a mic to Norm back there? Tony, knowing just a little bit of how you roll with these kinds of things, you'd probably just prefer to move on and not think about the episode today and just move on to planning for Saturday. But did Ethan say anything about 
strapping you down and putting an IV <laughs> in you to make sure that you're okay, yeah. or what's the plan for tonight yeah, to kind I'm, of make sure I, you're good? It's making too big a deal out of it. It'll be fine, I'm sure, and uh, we'll, they'll check me out, and maybe if I'm dehydrated, give you an IV, yeah, we'll see, but it's all good. We've got time for one more question, if anyone has one. No takers? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Coach.